Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is on qualitative graphs. Our objective is to sketch and describe qualitative graphs. Our real world link is on downloads. Emily is downloading photos from her digital camera to her computer. The table shows the percent of photos downloaded for several seconds. Now we're being asked during which period or periods of time did the percent downloaded not change? Well, as we look at our table, we go from 0 to 15 at 0 to 2 seconds, 15 to 30, but then here we have, we're stuck at 30%, then we go to 64, but then we're stuck at 64%. So our answer for this could be, well, between 4 and 6 seconds, and between 8 and 10 seconds. Next, during which period of time did the percent downloaded change the most? Well, first let's make sure our time is increasing at the same rate. We're increasing by 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. two. And the reason that's important is then this percent downloaded, the rate of change um, doesn't vary because our time is going up the same. So here we're increasing by 15, by 15, 0, by 34, by 0, by 18, and by 18. So between 6 and 8 seconds, we increased by 34%. So our answer here would be between 6 and and eight seconds. Graph and connect the ordered pairs. Well, our time is our independent variable, so our time is going to go on the x-axis, and our percent downloaded is our dependent variable, so that's going to go on our y-axis, percent downloaded. So we have zero seconds, well, zero time, or zero downloaded, also zero time, but 2, 15, 4, 30, 6, 30, 8, 64, yikes, 10, 64, 12, 82, and we finish with 14 and 100. And as we connect the dots here, well, it's not a U shape like the previous lessons, and it's also not linear, but this is our introduction into qualitative graphs. You can see where the rates of change were fast where they were nothing, where it really increased here between six and eight seconds, where it once again paused, and hopefully on yours you could draw the little straighter than mine, and then where the download speed increased. And actually here it should be a little bit straighter since our rate of change was the same, but there you go. Today's lesson we're going to be looking at this type of graph and being able to interpret, oh, this is where our download stopped. This is where our download was the fastest. Analyze qualitative graphs. The graph shown is a qualitative graph. Qualitative graphs are graphs used to represent situations that may not have numerical values or graphs in which numerical values are not included. Now, the axes are labeled here with time and percent downloaded, but there's no new numbers, there's no numerical values. But what you can't see is the relationship between time and percent of photos downloaded. So again, you can see where the download was kind of a quick rate, where it leveled out, a quick rate, leveled out, and increased again. That's what you'll be looking for. So in our example one here, the graph at the right displays the water level in a bathtub. Describe the level of change in the water level over time. 
time. So this is our time, this is our water level. Where we start at time zero, the water level is zero. Then it increases at a constant rate. We know it's a constant rate because this is linear. Then there's no change here. We're not increasing, we're not decreasing, so it's just flat. Then it decreases. The water level goes down over time here. And that should make sense if you think of giving a bath. The water level increases as you fill up the tub, and there's no change during the bath. Hopefully, there's not too much splashing around. And then it decreases as you pull the plug and drain out the water. So the graph at the right displays the temperature throughout the day. Describe the change in temperature over time. Well, we have the time of day, and we have our temperature. Now, there's no numbers here, so we're increasing, 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 levels out, and then decreases, 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 decreases. So one thing we could say here is, well, over time, the temperature increases, but is it at a constant rate? Well, if it was a constant rate, it would be linear, and this is kind of really not constant along this line. So we can say it increases at a varied rate. Sometimes it's increasing quickly, sometimes it's not increasing as quickly. And we can say it does this until it reaches a maximum. And then it reaches its maximum at the top. Then what happens? Well, then the temperature decreases at a varied rate again. Again, this isn't linear. It's not a straight line going down. The rate of change here is not constant. So we're going to say it increases at a varied rate, levels out, reaches its maximum, and then decreases at a varied rate as well. The graph represents revenue from a local clothing store. Describe the sales over time. Well, here we have our time, and we have our sales. And what it looks like, we have sales somewhat increasing, and then it dips down, and then it increases again, then it kind of steadies off, then it increases. So overall, we're seeing pretty much an increase. So we can say that. Overall, the sales increase over time. But were they always increasing? Well, here they kind of had a little bit of dip, and here they kind of leveled off a bit. So what we can say here to make that observation is that there are two periods of time where the sales decrease, and again, I hope you can see where they're decreasing right there, or remain constant, meaning remaining the same. And here's where they kind of leveled out here. It doesn't look like they dipped down, but they kind of remain the same. So overall, it's increasing. But they had a little period of time here when sales decreased, and a little period of time here where it looks like they kind of stayed flat. So that's that graph. Now that we've analyzed qualitative graphs, we need to be able to sketch qualitative graphs. Now qualitative graphs represent the essential elements of a situation in graphical form. 
you can sketch qualitative graphs to represent many real-world functions that are described verbally. Let's take a look at how this is done. A tennis ball is dropped onto the floor. On each successive bounce, it rebounds to a height less than its previous bounce until it comes to a rest on the floor. Sketch a qualitative graph to represent the situation. Our first step is going to be labeling our axes. Our time is independent, so that's on the x. Our distance from the floor is dependent on time, and that's on our y. Then we'll sketch the shape of the graph. Now the distance from the floor, it starts at the high value, and then it falls to the floor, bounces and rebounds to a height less than the original height, falls back down and bounces, goes to a height that's less than the or, or previous, goes down, rebounds a bit, goes down, rebounds a bit, and then just kind of comes down. What about a child on a swing? Well, once again, we have time elapsed and we have distance from the ground. Well, let's just say the, the distance from the ground starts at kind of a low value and then they swing up or backwards and say they swing up and they're kind of high off the ground and then they come back closer to the ground and then far from the ground and then closer to the ground and then even further up. So our ground level stays about the same. You can picture these points down here as when they are at the lowest point. But as they keep continuing on, they're getting a little bit higher, a little bit higher, and a little bit higher until the swing stops. Now let's see if we can do one of these on our own. A car is traveling at a constant speed. The car slows down steadily to come to a rest at a stoplight. Sketch a qualitative graph to represent the situation. Well, again, our first step is going to be to draw and label our axes. And time is independent, so time is going to be on our x-axis. And the speed here is going to be on the y-axis. Now, it's traveling at a constant speed, meaning it's not increasing, it's not decreasing at first. So over time, it is kind of traveling around here at a constant speed then it slows down steadily to come to rest at a stoplight. So it's just going to slow down steadily, meaning it's not going to be a sharp turn down, it's not going to be a herky-jerky stop. Now, let's see if we can connect those two there. And that's it. So you can imagine numbers, but we're not going to put numbers here. Let's say it's going 35 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour over time and then slows down 30, 20, 10, and 0 at the stoplight. I mean, you can imagine the numbers you're going to put in here. We're just not going to write those down. That's it for this lesson. Good luck.